Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. This video is like an introduction to distributions or introduction to understanding distributions. Now, what is a distribution? We'll come to that in a moment. First of all, let's think about what is a statistical question. A statistical question is one where you expect the answers to vary. For example, here's one. What did the students get on a test? Okay. And here's a question that is not a statistical question. What did John Doe get on a test? Maybe he got 75%, maybe he got 16 points, whatever. It's an individual result. But if we ask what did the students get on the test, then of course we expect that there's going to be many answers. If you have 20 students, then you have 20 different results. And when you have many different answers to the question, then you cannot just give all those answers because you might you might study the weight of dogs or something, and you might measure hundreds of dogs, so you don't want to give your answer as start listing all those hundred different answers. So instead what we do is we plot the, all that data and we make some kind of a graph. And the overall shape, this graph tells us the distribution of the data. It is how the data lies, how the data is organized when you look at it in a graph. So here, I already talked about how this first question is not a statistical question, but the second one is. And now here's the distribution for one class, class A, and their test results. The maximum on this test was 20 points, okay? And then here's the same test, and class B took the same test. And you can see that the distributions are different, right? Very different, okay? Each dot here corresponds to one student. So one student got 10 points, one student got 11 points, and there's two students got 12 points, and so on. Okay, in this first class, we can see that the center of the distribution, or the middle point, so to speak, is somewhere here, at 14 points approximately. The bulk of the students, the results are here at 13, 14, 15, right? And then they have one really good student, and one pretty good student, and then a few that didn't do very well but the bulk of the students are here. In class B though, things are different. You can see that they did much better on this test. The bulk of the students are here at 18, 19 points. So that's the center. The center of this distribution is somewhere here, okay? And there are some exact measures that we can calculate to find the center of the distribution. For example, mean or average is one of them. Median is another that we can calculate and find and that will tell us where the center of the distribution is. And another big difference between these two is the range, or the, it has to do with the spread of the distribution. This one is spread out much more, because there's one here at 10, another student at 20. Okay, so they spread out from 10 to 20. This one is not spread out nearly as much, because the worst student, the lowest student score was 15, and then the maximum was 20, okay? So it is much more compact here. So that's another thing we always want to study about distributions, is the spread. How much has it spread? Okay, and another third important thing is the overall shape of the distribution. Like here we have a peak. Just here also we have a peak. That often happens that most of the data is concentrated around a peak. Let's look at this example here. First of all, I have two questions here. We need to find out which one of them is a statistical question. How long do people in Switzerland live? And then, how long will Uncle Joe live? Obviously, the first one is a statistical question because we expect many different answers, right? There's lots of people in Switzerland and they live different lengths of years. Their lives are of different lengths. Whereas this is about an individual person, and if he's still living, we don't even know the answer. Okay, this is a distribution, this is a graph of the distribution of how long people in Switzerland live. I actually checked the statistics online, and this peak of the distribution happens at 84 years. So people in Switzerland live long lives. Now there's another peak here at zero, okay? And that has to do with, of course, newborn deaths, okay, infant deaths. 
So there's somewhat of a peak at infant deaths. Then the death rate is very low. There's only very few people dying when they are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you know, children. And then the number of deaths per age starts climbing. And there's a definite big peak that is at 84, and then it gradually diminishes over there. So this is an interesting shape because it has two peaks. There's this most of the people dying around these ages, but then there's also a significant peak here at zero. And I listed here the important things to find out and observe about distributions and about your data that you have. One is the number of observations. That means, for example, here, how many students there are, how many dots there are here, okay? Then the center, I already talked about that. In our next lesson, we're going to study measures for the center of a distribution. The main ones being the mean, the median, and the mode. The overall shape I mentioned, there's all kinds of different possibilities for an overall shape. Not only this, there's also a possibility that sometimes you might get like a double peak. Or sometimes you might have data that starts out at the low end very much and then just tapers down like that. Kind of like a hill going down, that's all there is to it. For example, if you look at people's incomes, you get that kind of a shape. There's tons of people earning low incomes and then it tapers down and very few people earning high incomes. And then the spread, like mentioned, is also a very important part. We need to always check if the data is spread a lot, spread just a little, that definitely affects how we interpret the data and what it might tell us. Okay, I hope this was helpful.